So this is a bit different from the case Mark's just done. Mark's done a, a case study based on a, a, a drug that was a putative structure modifying drug. And what I'm going to be doing is talking about um, something that came out of a study that wasn't an OA study. So it's a bit different to be bringing to this audience. Um, that's my disclosures. And I'm going to talk a little bit about IL-1 inhibition and where we got our ideas that IL-1 in humans in clinical studies was not very effective. And then talk about the Cantos trial in a bit of detail. So without going too much into the science, there's a lot of reasons for believing that IL-1 as a cytokine is driving a lot of both the pro-inflammatory in, uh, manifestations of OA, but also the cartilage degradation through ADAM pathways and, and other pathways. It's helping, um, it's driving uh, chondrocyte um, and cartilage breakdown. And indeed, the earliest OA literature going back 30, 40, 50 years, all suggested that IL-1 was probably going to be the main target. Now, um, there's a recent review from Tonya Vincent that I haven't quoted here, looking at the sort of animal studies of IL-1. And that says, well, look, the data's pretty mixed and nothing's much convincing from animal um, studies of anti-IL-1 therapies. So what do we know about previous human anti-IL-1? And I've tried to summarize it in this table. And what you can see here is that the oldest of the public studies was from Xavier Chevalier and his group looking at Anakinra, the recombinant um, IL-1-RA um, drug. And here you see that in a short term, a 12-week study, um, they looked at a couple of doses intra-articularly in people in sort of a, what I'll call a slightly older design OA trial with a WOMAC outcome at week four was the primary endpoint. And they didn't show a difference. There did look to be a day four difference for the highest dose, but not beyond that. Then there was an early canakinumab trial we did years and years ago. Um, and we've just presented some data from that. This was also an IA single intra-articular injection, short duration. Um, and overall in that trial, we don't see difference in pain um, compared to placebo or naproxen. It was a three-arm study. Again, um, day four endpoint, so a very short endpoint. There was an Amgen drug 108, which was an anti-IL-1, again, sorry, an IL-1 RA antibody. And Stan Cohen published this back in 2011. Now we've got a, a better sized study um, it's a primary endpoint of pain. Again, a short-term pain outcome at week six. Again, the definitions of OA probably wouldn't quite be what we would get into a modern osteoarthritis trial. And what we don't see is um, overall a benefit on pain, but for those who have higher baseline pain, a more recent OA design trial issue, then there does appear to be a trend in benefit. And lastly, the biggest uh, and more modern study, lutekizumab, this is the AbV drug anti-IL-1 alpha and beta. And Roy Fleischman published this in 2019. You've got four groups with three different doses of, of active agent versus placebo. It's a 52-week study with a 16-week pain primary, but also co-primaries of inflammatory structural events, so synovitis and effusion. And only one dose meets the primary endpoint, that's a 100 milligram dose, meets the primary endpoint of reducing WOMAC, no change at the 26 weeks in the inflammatory outcomes. So just overall, you look at it and say not too exciting, but a couple of, of minor signals in there. So let me introduce you, if you're not familiar already with the CANTOS trial, which is a cardiovascular trial from Paul Ridker and his colleagues. Um, and this is published a few years back now. And it's a great idea because it says, can treating inflammation 
um, reduce atherothrombosis, irrespective of affecting lipids, because you wouldn't expect anti-IL-1 to affect lipids. And so to get into this study, you had to have had a previous myocardial infarction and a HSCRP greater than two. So nothing like the criteria. Indeed, people who've had heart attacks or multiple heart attacks, exactly the people we don't put into OA trials, but this is a very large study, over 10,000 people, and they got randomized to three doses of canakinumab or placebo, and they got it subcutaneously every three months. So if you like systemic dosing of anti-IL-1, and the primary outcomes were all cardiovascular, either non-fatal or fatal cardiovascular stroke or stroke endpoints. And what they showed was with one of the doses, the 150 milligrams, they achieved their primary endpoint. So the, the model was um, proven that you can reduce, by reducing inflammation per se, you can reduce um, cardiovascular end, um, death. But in the hidden in the results of the, the adverse event table out of this trial was a very interesting finding. And I'm just focusing there on the osteoarthritis adverse events. So not osteoarthritis incidents, but just people who came complaining of something to their joints. And it was noticeable that this was reduced in the people getting canakinumab. So that lent us to go and look back at this data set and see what had happened over time to joint replacement. Why? Because this trial had a median follow-up of 3.7 years. So we were talking about the IL-1 studies with four day primary endpoints or, or endpoints. Now we've got a study that's gone over three and a half years. It's a massive trial. And we looked at time to incident joint replacement, that's total knee replacement or total hip replacement, um, the time to their OA related adverse events, people coming complaining of symptoms. And we looked in everybody and those with a prior history of OA. What's interesting in this group is when you look at it, this is a group selected for HSCRP that's elevated. You've got a higher BMI, slightly higher than usual, not too much, but a lot more diabetics. And this feels much more like what used to be called metabolic OA many years ago. And what the study shows is that over that 3.7 years median duration, here's the, the primary exploratory endpoint. Remember all this is post hoc analysis of a study that was designed for something else. But it shows over a 40% reduction in the risk for joint uh, for arthroplasty, and this is the combined um, canakinumab doses versus placebo. And we saw it across all the different doses. So I can't think of a study I've seen that had this sort of reduction in joint replacement. When you look at those who had baseline reported OA, so somebody had reported this patient has got OA at baseline, we see pretty much the same effect. So um, obviously the commonest reason for having a joint replacement across the world is OA by far. About 99% of joint replacements are due to OA, but not all would have been captured in this predominantly cardiovascular trial. And then we looked at um, in the uh, another exploratory analysis was looking at patients with that history and the odds ratios and the hazards ratios over time of the full trial cohort and in those people with history of osteoarthritis at baseline. And indeed, the, if anything, the effect size is a bit bigger in the people who reported osteoarthritis at baseline. Um, but this is um, the incidence rates for OA adverse events, people coming complaining, something that got them to be recorded as an adverse event in the trial. So um, this is a pretty quick presentation because I think there's a number of considerations to come out of CANTOS. One is I think we have to rethink uh, our belief about anti-IL-1 and inhibiting inflammatory pathways because there's clearly more to this story than we considered previously. How does this study different from our previous anti-IL-1 trials and indeed a lot of other OA trials. Well, the inclusion criteria wasn't osteoarthritis. It's not something I recommend to this, to this meeting today. Um, the size of the study, 10,000 people, oh my goodness. This is a scary amount for people wanting, uh, companies wanting to do phase two studies 
and things that are, you know, to, to get a something, a go, no go decision on a drug. This is a scary number trial. The duration of treatment, you know, 3.7 years. Most companies I deal with have a view of osteoarthritis phase twos that comes out of an RA, a rheumatoid arthritis background. They think a three month trial will tell them what they want to know about a drug. And I don't think that's gonna be the case. And that's terribly scary. And I get the financial fear of, of, of investing in that. And then we come to the issue of total joint replacement as an endpoint, not something we've considered. We know there's lots of variability and I won't try and preempt the discussion that's coming, but I just wanted to throw a couple of things um, Mr. Uh, for the chairman to underpin our next discussion. Firstly, people have been looking at this issue of what might be a virtual, what might be an alternative? In, can you have a pain function level that people get to that predicts they're going to have joint replacement? And both the previous speaker, Mark and I were part of this group over a decade ago working on large data sets to try and see if there would be cut points that could um, predict who might get. So that's one way of thinking about um, a surrogate for joint replacement, patient reported outcomes. Then I think I'll, I'll defer to Nikolai and others who are here today, who wrote an interesting piece recently that if we're gonna think about the, the survival element of joints, we can do a time to TKR, but it will be a massive study for many years. Or we can do time to what I call a poor outcome, bad outcome for patients. It's a progression outcome. Um, it relates to the survive bit. Time to TKR or a bad status. And that's, a, and I won't try, and Nikolai will probably talk to this himself, but I think this is the only way we could have a feasible study design, I think, because just waiting for a TKR to happen could be a long and very slow and very large process that's just untractable and not feasible. So I think it's considering this for our discussion is great. So I'll uh, finish their chairs and just again, thank the FDA and the Arthritis Foundation. I'd like to thank um, Paul Ridker and Dan Solomon from Harvard and the Cantos Trial Group for allowing us to play in their data and, and particularly to Matthias, Linda and Jens from the Novartis team who um, helped pull all this um, really interesting, eye-opening research together. Thanks very much.